Welcome to the training video for the Hitachi 4800. This instrument is located in SuperCom 13. To begin, we will first discuss sample preparation. So here we have the different types of sample holders that you can use for the Hitachi 4800 here at MRL. You can see there's a few different sizes. They're used for different purposes. So you can see they have this hole on the bottom and these allow it to screw into the short or the long screw. So you have to make sure that it has that feature. Now, what are these for? So different size samples and also different orientations of the sample. So you can see this one has a wall you could mount your sample to look at a cross section, but it's for very small samples. You could use this one for larger samples cross sections. And it also has these holes here, and the holes are for, if you're not gonna use carbon tape, you can use clips and screws to clamp your sample to it. And this also works for this holder. This one is not the same as this. This is for perfectly perpendicular. This one has a tilt predefined 45 degree angle, which is more than you're going to be able to tilt inside the SEM. So you can use this one to look at your sample. This is the same. Has a larger edge. You can also use this side for the flat cross section. These are for flat samples where you're interested in just laying the sample flat and looking at the top surface. Why you might choose a different size, either your sample is actually this large or maybe you have multiple small samples. In that case, it's okay to mount more than one onto one of these large sample pucks. So how would we assemble a sample? So for example, we're gonna need the base holder, a puck, some carbon tape to hold the sample. We'll use the penny for example, this washer, and one of these screws. And the size of the screw depends on how tall your sample is. So you can see the short end here screws into the base here. So we would use the longer one for really small samples. We can attach the washer and then we need to screw it on here. And you can see this is the bottom. You see this side should be pointed down. Then you have the washer, screw, and the sample plate. Now we need to figure out what's the height. This is our height gauge. So we can see this is too short. We don't want it to be taller. It's critical. This is our eight millimeter height gauge for the working system. So we can raise the screw up by turning. Something like that. Make sure the sample is on. Tighten the washer, but make sure that it's tight. Try to use a small piece of carbon tape. Okay. Make sure it's secure. Check the height. The height is too tall. So we will loosen the washer and then screw down just a little bit. 
until the height looks good. And then we tighten the washer. Very important, you need to use the magnet and check that your sample is not magnetic. So this would be how you would mount the sample. So there are a couple of things you can do wrong when you try to set up your sample. As shown here, you can turn the base upside down and mount it the wrong way. Do not do this. There are pictures in front of the table if you forget which way it goes, and you can always check. As shown here, this is the proper way that the base should be mounted anytime you are preparing your sample. Also note, anytime you prepare, do not over tighten the set screw or strip the screws. The second critical mistake you can make is tightening the screw down too far below the bottom of the base. This is a critical mistake. You cannot do this. Make sure it is not beyond the bottom. If your sample is really tall, use the short screw to prevent this from happening. In this section, I'm going to introduce you to the instrument software. So here you can see our monitor. In the top left corner, we have the controls. Usually here you're just going to choose the accelerating voltage you'll use for your sample. Up in the top center, you can choose the different scan speeds for your sample. To the right of that, you'll see a box with the yellow X30. That is where you can see if you're in high or low mag and what magnification that you're imaging at. Then to the right, you have three tabs. You'll have the stage where you set, make sure you're at the home center position, the SEM to choose the imaging conditions and the detector types, and the utility for data processing options. Then down at the bottom, the main button you'll probably use is the maintenance tab to check that the vacuum is correct. And then over to the far left on the bottom is where we'll do the image saving. Okay, so before you load the sample, there's a couple of things you need to check. So over here on the right, we're going to go to the stage tab, and then we are going to make sure that the specimen You can see here, size is correct, and then below that is the stage position. We want to make sure it's at 25 on the X and 25 on the Y. This ensures that when we push the rod in to unload the sample, it goes to the correct spot. Next, we'll move down here to the bottom right. We're going to click the maintenance button. So it's going to open a window, and you can see the top three and then the one below that, these boxes should all be green. If they're not, you should contact staff before you decide to use the instrument. This box is pink, but it's okay to still use the instrument. In the front of the instrument, also check that the Z height is at eight millimeters, the stage is not locked, and the tilt is at zero. So now we're ready to load the sample. So first we're going to press the air button on the top here and we're going to vent the sample chamber. You're going to wait for the beep and then you can know you can open the box. Do not pull on the rod. Instead, put your hands on the box and gently slide it open. Next, you're going to see these two banana clips here, the two prongs here that's where the sample is going to go. If you look at the base, you can see two holes on one side. Those will be the ones that you slide on. Okay, It should feel loose. It's not going to feel super tight. Then you come over to the rod, gently turn it to the lock position. Okay, so now we'll close the door. 
Okay, so now we're ready to press the evac button, put the sample chamber back under vacuum. You'll also hear a beep when this process is completed. Okay, so once it's done, we can press the open and wait. You can look at the infrared monitor here. Wait for the door to open. Okay, so now we can push the rod in. Do not bend the rod in any direction. We only push straight. Keep a grip on it so that it doesn't pull in too fast. And we're gonna make sure we don't hit the pull piece here. And make sure you push it in all the way so that it's definitely on the stage. Okay, so now we're going to unlock the rod so that it will leave the sample inside and gently pull the rod straight back out. Make sure when you get to the end here, you pull the rod just a little bit more so that it will stay by itself. And now it's safe to close the door. Do not close the door if the rod is not pulled all the way out. So now we're gonna wait five minutes. And after that time, you can then turn on the high voltage in the top left corner. You'll wait for it to load and then you can choose your settings. The current is always set to the default of 10. The accelerating voltage is your choice. Um, for very conductive samples, you can use up to 20. That's our max. If your sample has charge sensitivity, you may start at 5. And just so you're aware, we can go even lower than 5 if needed. Okay, make sure the emission adjust is checked. It should be at 50%. We don't usually change that. If the software ever asks you to flash the tip, you will turn off the high voltage, press the flashing button, and then execute. Once it's done, you can turn the voltage back on. Okay, so next we're gonna come over to the SEM tab. Make sure that we're using the SE signal. You can choose which detector to use. The mix is generally good for most people. Make sure you set your probe current as to the desired, and we'll set the working distance to eight. If you need to rotate the image, you can use check this R rotation for raster rotation. Okay, so here you can see on the left the controls I'll be using, and on the right this will be the image. So first I'm going to do a coarse focus with this knob and bring the sample into focus. And we are at the low mag, and this is the lowest magnification that you can look at your sample with. You can click the APC button to adjust the brightness and contrast. So we use low mag to find the spot that you actually want to image. So the next step would be to use this joystick here and you're actually going to move around um, on the stage to look for the spot that you want to magnify in and take an image of. So this is a sample of gold nanoparticles, so we're going to just pretty much image anywhere that looks okay. Okay, so this knob, this large knob on the left, is what you can use to magnify in, and you can see the number changing in the top black box at the top of the screen. You can only go so far in low mag though. You can see as you magnify, the focus may need adjusting as well. So we'll do that here. Okay, so this, these two knobs that I'm checking is the stigmatism. We'll check it in both the X and Y. Your focus may not be perfect 
if the stigmatism is off. So usually you can focus, check your stigmatism, and then recheck your focus again if needed. So click this button. We're going to switch to high mag. We do have to fix our focus again when we make this transition. That's okay. You can see the image is shifting as I'm focusing. Hopefully after we do the alignment, we shouldn't have that problem. Okay, so we'll adjust the color. You can do it manually as well. In this top right is the contrast. So these particles are quite small. We need to magnify in some more. So here is definitely at 45K, it's a good place to do the alignment. So we can just find a good spot. And this button on the right is the fine focus. So when you go to high mag, the fine focus is easier to work with than the coarse. Checking the stigmatism again. So how to check the stigmatism? You turn it one way until the image gets worse, then you go the other way, it'll get better, and then if you keep going it'll get worse again. Um, so that can help you find the best position. Next we click the align button at the top. We're going to start at the top one for the beam align. So use the center two buttons to move the beam in x or y direction and make sure you put it in the center. It's very sensitive, so you only need to make very slight adjustments. Now it's in the center, and this looks good. Okay, so go down the list. If it pops you back out to a lower mag, just close the box and zoom back in. It's a glitch that doesn't happen every single time. Open the align again. Okay, so we are checking to basically minimize the wobble. You see there's a lot of Y movement, so I'm going to correct the Y knob here. And you see as I go in this direction, the wobble gets less and less. That is the goal, is to minimize it in both the X direction and the Y. So you can make an adjustment and then look at the image, see if it got better. If it got better, then you're going in the right direction. If it starts to get worse, then you should stop or go back. Next you can move down. The goal is the same, to minimize the wobble in both X and Y direction. It will not be as perfect as the last one though, so don't worry too much about that. Okay, you can see it was getting worse, so it went too far. You can see it's getting worse, so I'm going to go back. So this is probably the best kind of position for this. Okay, we'll move to the last one. It looks like there's a lot more image wobble in the X direction, so we'll use the X knob first.
Okay, when you have it as good as you think you can, you can close the alignment box and then we can proceed to take some images. Or, if you think you can get better resolution at a different working distance, you can adjust that now. So, for example, we can move to 6 millimeters, and we will then, after changing it in the software, come to the front of the instrument and actually raise the stage to 6 millimeters. 6 millimeter for this instrument is the limit. Okay, so after we make this change, of course we need to refocus and also we're re going to recheck the alignment as well. Okay, so this procedure is the same as before. We magnify it in, we adjust the focus, check the stigmatism, and then check the alignment looks good. So this one, the aperture is kind of off, so let's minimize that wobble. Okay, so this looks good. Check the others. And they're actually not so bad. Um, a really bad case, it would be jerking all over the screen, and that would be where you need to make major adjustments. Here, the adjustments are only minor. Okay, so alignment done, and make sure we'll zoom in some more to do an extra sharp image adjustment. We're going to use that fine focus. Make sure the image is not stretched in either direction, and then we will check the stigmatism. Turn it until it gets worse, and then go back to the best spot. Then check the Y as well, it gets worse, go back gets worse, so we find that best position. And then go back and check your focus again. So you can see a lot more detail is being resolved at the 6 millimeter, the ultra high resolution, than we saw previously. So once you have the image focused and you check the stigmatism, you can change the speed. Whichever speed that you're imaging with is the one that you can also save with. So you can see a lot of the graininess gets resolved when you go to the slow scan. But if your sample is very charge sensitive, scanning slow can actually make that worse and it doesn't help your image. So you have to kind of make this choice based on your individual sample. Now for final touch, I adjust the brightness and contrast, go back to the slow scan. You can see the image looks pretty good. So now I'm going to press this button, and this button allows you to actually capture the image.
So when you think about what's the best image, um, resolving the smallest details and then zooming back out will give you the sharpest image possible. And also try not to make the, the whole image completely monotone gray. Adding a bit of contrast makes the image actually uh, look nicer and show the features that you would want to, want to show. The last step is click the save button in the bottom left, navigate to the users folder, make yourself a folder, or open your current one, and then you will save the data into that folder. Okay, you choose the file type over here on the right, and then you can click Save. You can also save these images as a batch at the very end by just highlighting all of them across the bottom and then clicking Save and saving all under one name that gets incremented. Um, if you want to do measurements, you can come to Utility, click on the measure icon, and then draw a line, and it will give you a measurement if for example, you want to measure the size of this particle. Okay, now if you want to save that measurement, you would have to click the save at the top of the screen, and then it will actually let you save um, the image with the measurement on top of it. Okay, if you want to get rid of the measurement, you will click this highlight all and then clear will remove the markers. Okay, so at the very end, make sure you delete all of the images in preparation for the next user who's coming in. When you want to go back to imaging, you press run and then choose your scan speed. Okay, and so the steps are pretty much the same after this. You navigate around, decide you which uh, image you want to save, choose your speed, and then press the capture. Since this image was sharpened at the higher magnification, I did not have to refocus it. I just had to zoom out and press capture again. Okay, go back to run and fast scan and navigate somewhere else. Okay, so for unloading the sample we need to make sure the stage is back at its center position. So highlight, physically type 25, press enter, and wait for the stage to move. Now it's done, we will move to Y and do the same thing. It is critical that the stage is at the center position X, Y, and Z. You can turn off the high voltage in the top left corner. Make sure the Z is back to 8 millimeters. This ensures that when we use the loading rod, we can collect our sample. Okay, also make sure stage is not locked and tilt to zero, which should not have been changed anyways. So because the chamber leaks, we're going to press the air button and do a fresh evac before we open the door to the inside chamber. You wait for the beep, press evac. Okay, once it's done, you can then open the door. Wait for it to actually open on the camera. 
Now we can insert the rod to collect the sample. Okay, once the sample rod is all the way in, turn the knob to the lock position and then gently pull the rod back out and you should see on the camera the sample is being pulled out. Okay, now the rod is pulled all the way out, you can close the door. Okay, we need to retrieve it so we're going to vent the chamber again. Use your hands on the box to open the sample chamber. You can grab the sample and make sure you unlock the loading bar and be gentle when you turn it. You don't have to turn it very hard. And now you can slide your sample off. Close the door and put it back under vacuum. Press evac. And here you can see a close-up of the buttons.